In this segment, we will meet the candidates for the Jefferson County Commission race out of the Middleway District. They would be the Republican Michael Mood and the Democrat Natalie Grantham Friend. Um, good morning to both of you, and thank you so much for uh, coming here for this forum. Good morning. You'll get a, a minute for an opening statement, and we'll reverse the order for the closing. You'll also get a minute for the closing statement in between. Steve Pearson, Bill Stubblefield will have questions for you. Try to limit your responses to two minutes or less. <coughs> And if your opponent invokes your name or any of your policies or thoughts in uh, their response, you have the right to a direct response at the conclusion of their thought. For the opening statements, I'll start first with you, Michael. You have good, a minute. Good morning. My name is Michael Mood. I am running for the Middleway District County Commission seat. Uh, my wife and I moved to Jefferson County in 1995 to raise our family here. Uh, we raised four boys. Uh, we were foster parents to the West Virginia Youth Advocate Program. Uh, we've been involved in community activities throughout uh, my life. Um, in Jefferson County, we've been involved with uh, multiple different sports organizations, as well as HOAs and, and the Volunteer Fire Service. Uh, we're business owners in Jefferson County. Uh, we've got uh, one business in uh, Rhode Island of the House in uh, Leetown, and another one out of Charlestown. Thank you, Mr. Mood. Yeah. Natalie Grantham Friend. Good morning. I am Natalie Grantham Friend. I'm on the Democratic ticket for um, County Commission seat for the Middleway District. I am a lifelong resident of Jefferson County. I am a multi generational farming farmer and from a multi generational farming family. I am a licensed journeyman and I work in the solar industry in the residential and commercial solar industry. So that's a hot button issue these days. I am a vendor at the Charlestown Farmers Market as well as the president of the Shepherdstown Farmers Market. I have three, I'm the mother of three public school aged children. That's probably my most important job. And I am a lifelong 4 H'er and 4 H leader. And I'm just generally excited to run for this opportunity because I feel like I know what's great about our community and I look forward to, to promoting that. If I recall, your family's farming dates back to the 1700s? 1763. I am Generation 8. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pearson. All right. So a uh, little public service plug here. So we're going to have four of these uh, pairs of candidates, each for a different seat. But all residents of Jefferson County will get to vote for all of these seats, even though we give them different names. So you all have a, a place to live, but everyone lives in Jefferson County, and everyone who lives in Jefferson County will vote for all these races. So um, the county commission, I've seen you guys at a lot of these, uh, these meetings and uh, also at the planning commission meetings. Their county commission is going to be voting on the updated comprehensive plan in January. Um, one of you will be sitting there uh, voting for it. The draft of this plan calls for reviewing the county zoning ordinance to add additional land uses in all zoning districts. Do you think that any additional land uses are needed in the county, particularly in the rural zone? And if so, do you think those additional land uses should be allowed as a principal permitted use or as a conditional use? So this is a little preview of the kind of questions you'll get on the county commission. So let's start off with Mr. Mood. Uh, <clears throat> so yes, absolutely we need to make changes. The county is exploding in growth and we've got to start getting it under control. And part of the, what we're seeing is permitted use where things should be able to run like solar compounds out of control because they're allowed and we don't have any or very limited conditions on them. Um, so I think it should be listed as a conditional use instead. And we do have to work with our zoning and lay out how we want to build Jefferson County. Um, we have tremendous residential growth with massive developments coming in on small pieces of land in some cases, and that growth is not sustainable. So we've got to work forward with uh, plans to focus on that and structure how it will be done. Ms. Grafton. Hi. I am aware that most recently we were using the buy right language as far as the comprehensive plan and now we've moved to permitted use. And my question is what, what does that mean exactly? I'm not aware of how that is defined and what those permitted uses will be. So I would like a lot of these things to be conditional uses. I feel like we are at the comprehensive plan is very reactionary, not proactive. I, I want to see where we are going as a county. We've just, we're just, how do I say this? We are just um, 
kind of editing along. I've even heard from constituents that, does the comprehensive plan really matter? We didn't follow the last one. So I would really like to get a vision for where as a county we want to go and then work together to move in that direction. Mr. Stubblefield. Yes, there's been a lot of discussion recently about groundwater. How would you protect the groundwater in Jefferson County, especially in light of all the development we're seeing? We'll start with you first, mm -hmm. Natalie. So the last groundwater study that we are using, the actual physical study was done, I believe, in 1991 or 1992, and then in 2016, it was, you know, we used that data to come up with a new study. So that is a huge issue for me. I also live on a well. And I know in Berkeley County, I've heard on your show as well, they talk about how if you are to get a developmental permit, you are to provide the historical groundwater usage, right? How is your new building going to impact the people who are already drawing from that aquifer? I think that's really, really important. And there is only so many of these resources. Protecting our natural resources is very important. Once we run out, what are we going to do? So having a plan and executing it is definitely a priority. Mr. Moot? Um, we do actually have to work forward on a new groundwater study. The last one was done in 1991, and we're not actively doing that for the developments that are coming in. Berkeley County has done that, and they've done it right with a uh, development of over, I believe it's 15 homes, they have to do a groundwater study to make sure that there's water there suitable for the number of houses that are going in. Um, and as we're continuing to build and build without doing that, we are putting our water uh, in jeopardy. Um, and as we're getting out into the more resident or more rural areas where we're doing a lot more wells, Jefferson County is on limestone and has lots of pockets of water. Um, me and my neighbor and several neighbors around may very well be on the same pocket of water. Um, so we've got to look at that and see what we're drawing off of that and is it sustainable before we start allowing that in permits. Mr. Pearson. Okay. What can, um, what Jefferson County services would you prioritize for increased funding as the residential tax base grows? We'll start Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant. Well, one of the things we've definitely heard of is our lack of emergency services, right? The ambulances moving from the volunteer fire departments to the Jefferson County Ambulance Authority has been a huge issue, as well as now we're doing the same thing with the fire departments. So just getting a better plan, understanding how this is really going to play out in real world scenarios and getting our first responders the support we need is is key. Any, I really want us to decrease response times. There are places in our county that cannot be reached within 10 minutes and I don't think that's acceptable. So as we're moving forward, looking at residential growth, residential growth is a load on the system. It does not pay as much in taxes as what services it requires. So we've got to focus on commercial growth to help build that tax base so that we can balance out the general revenue as a whole and be able to add funding to things like police, fire, and EMS. Um, looking at EMS, I wasn't real happy with the direction they took it, but they are going in the right direction. It's just I think they did a little too fast. Is the fire service going the exact same way? No, it's not. Uh, the, fire, the county did get an FDID number here in the past couple of weeks. Their plans, to my understanding, uh, I am one of the fire chiefs in the county, uh, their plans, to my understanding, are not to take over the volunteer fire service. They don't even begin to have the money to run the EMS service, let alone the fire service, which will very easily be 10 times the cost. Mr. Stubblefield. Impact fees have <clears throat> resurfaced as a, a point of major interest. How do you see the impact fees should be dispersed through the various entities of the county? Who would you like to go first? Uh, Mr. Moot. Uh, so I've watched how impact fees have gone. Um, in the early days when they came out, they were set at about $15,000 per household. Um, and then you had a structure on the res or commercial as to what its uh, impact was. <clears throat> impact fees are used for uh, expansion of service. It cannot be used for um, continuing to operate. So in looking at how we move those forward, we need to focus on education. We need to focus on uh, EMS 
police, um, as well as some of the parks and rec as well. Um, so we've got to move forward with that. And looking at the plan they have, uh, I think they're rushing it um, to try to get it in before the end of this year because one of the commissioners will not be coming back, and she really would like to see uh, this move forward and, and get education back on that. I think if we do this in a fast manner, which they are on track to do, I think we're going to do it wrong. I think we need to slow down, look at it, and make sure we have the, uh, the fees right and the numbers right in all the different categories before we pass that. Natalie? I have to tend to agree. Jane Tabb, who's currently in the seat we are running for, she's not running for re-election. Impact fees, she, she is very passionate about. In the meetings, she, you know, she's passionate about it. She wants a, this to go, go move forward. I do feel that people moving in should be in charge of paying for growth. That being said, um, the impact fee, again, again, it was thousands of dollars, and it's just been whittled and whittled away by the previous commissions. And I think a lot of people just didn't really realize. It was one of those things where, as residents were not paying attention like we should, right? And so listening to the expert give us the study, you know, he, even he was surprised that education was down to a dollar. So yes, taking our time and doing it right is the most important thing and not rushing it. Back to you, Mr. Pierce. Okay. Well, let's, uh, you were talking about uh, econ economic growth. What role can the county commission play in supporting the growth of local economic opportunities? I'll start with you, Mr. Muth. So we support that through the Jefferson County Development Authority. Um, we've just hired on a new director for the Development Authority, and one of the things I need, I think we need to do is tax her with identifying the types of jobs that the new residents coming to Jefferson County are doing, where they're working, the companies they're working for, and is there an ability to bring those companies to Jefferson County? <clears throat> if we can bring those companies to Jefferson County, that helps build a tax base here. Those businesses are, are then paying taxes here in Jefferson County instead of, let's say, Northern Virginia. Uh, our residents are now being able to stay in Jefferson County to work. That reduces their time away from home. Uh, that increases their abilities to get involved in things like their kids' sports, their church programs, their fire services, as well as other uh, public service organizations that help benefit all of us in this county and don't necessarily take away our tax dollars. I was pleased to hear that we have hired a new administrator for the JCDA. It's a very important, a very important position. Small businesses are something that is the heart of our community, and I look forward to supporting small businesses in our community. One of the things we desperately need to, for business growth and even to su support um, work at home people or people who are commuting or anything like that is broadband. We don't have the infrastructure in place to actually, for them to do their jobs. And we want them to stay in our communities so that they spend their money, so that they take their friends out to lunch and all of those things, buy their gas in, the, in West Virginia. All of those things are important, but without having the infrastructure in place and broadband being one of them, we don't have a chance. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing. Before we move to closing statements, I want to get a quick question in on solar because we haven't really gotten your thoughts on that. I know you folks have plenty of time to publish those thoughts. Uh, but in, guard, in regards to Jefferson County's future with solar panels specifically, Natalie Grantham, friend, what would you change, if anything? What would I change? I, I do not like industrial solar eating up our farmland. I am a farmer first. I will always be a farmer first, removing our topsoil, not growing our crops. I mean, that's just, that's not how I was raised, right? I'm a steward of this land. As far as solar, I would love to see solar on parking lots, on f any sort of flat roof, on any sort of impermeable surface. Anything can be done wrong and done right. And so solar in this case is that. I, would, I, don't, I don't want it in our fields. I want it in our industrial parks in supporting that infrastructure. Michael Mood. <clears throat> in talking with the farmers that are out here and listening to what their needs were, um, they're all looking for a way to survive. And that's why some of the farmers that are more along the tracks of the power grid or power lines that are heading up over the mountain are looking more at the solar compounds as a way to survive. Um, 
the solar compounds, a lot of the reason they are able to survive is the subsidies that come that help them be able to afford a much higher rate for the land than renting the land to things like vineyards or other farming. Uh, and that's why the farmers are taking that. They're taking the easiest dollar for them to survive off of. Uh, so what we need to do instead is we need to find other things to come, help replace that. And I also think that we need to put policies in place that restrict how close these can be to property lines. We need to have much better barriers around them. Um, but we've got to find something else for them to be able to live off of and not just say, no, you can't have solar. Um, do I believe solar is okay? If you want to do it on residential, great. If you want to do it on commercial rooftops, great. If you want to pull up topsoil on hundreds of acres of farmland to do it, no, that's not acceptable. Let's go to closing statements, and we'll start first with Natalie Gl uh, Grantham Friend. Thank you for, ha for, for giving us this opportunity to speak with you all this evening, or this, today, I'm sorry, this morning, and your audience. Clearly, I'm used to doing evening forums, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you want to find out more about my campaign, you can follow along at natalie4wv.com, and I welcome any and all questions that anyone has. Um, again, I am a, a lifelong resident who cares about our community. That's why I threw my name in the ring, and I hope you'll consider me. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Mood. Uh, my name is Michael Mood. I'm running for the Middleway District County Commission seat. Um, I've got a, a, a lifelong track record of working in public safety and organizations where people don't always have the exact same way of thinking or ideas. And I've had a proven track record of being able to get them to come together and move forward for the general good of the community. And that's what I want to bring to this county commission. Thank you. Thank you both for accepting our invitation to appear today. We wish you both the best of luck in the upcoming election. Thank you.